These ones are a month as of today. Welcome back to Skagway and we are doing the tendering again today. If you watched my previous Skagway video then you know there was an avalanche a few years ago that shut down the road. So we are doing the tendering to the pier. So I've decided again to help the shore concierge or shore excursion team to uh, escort another tour. I'm not sure which one they're going to put me on. And that small boat down there is our tender boat, just unloading some of our guests for their tours. The early morning speedboat tour is returning. This one does some wildlife scenery and some fast skipping across the water. Now I can explain what's going on. Welcome to the uh, Husky Sled Dog Mushing Center. This is gonna be cool. Let's go see some Huskies. I am excited, the guy just told us that we have to go on this truck. I guess it's part of the tour. <laughs> so the name of this vehicle is a Unimog. I just asked the guide. it is summertime we will not be doing the dod mushing uh, on the snow obviously so they don't have the sleds they actually have these buggies full of wheels as you can see this is what we're going on hello doggies they're ready to go hello hello gang let's do this so because our cart is full, the guide is going to have me ride on the back. I will be standing on this thing right here. And let's do this. Good job. Good job. On the left we have Taffy. She's five years old and she's ran in the editor on three times. And then there's Bridger on the right, that black dog. She's seven years old and she's raced the editor on five times. But we can't go to anywhere unless those new dogs want to go that way. Lucky for us, they're very experienced. Oh, I say that. And then... All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Off we go. Yep. All right, hold on. We have a little bit of a wardrobe malfunction, so I'm going to go fix that. Yeah, okay. as soon as we tangle up. Who are these guys? Yeah. They're... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's behind us. Good job, team. Okay, we well done. So apparently they got a little tangled up at the front. Yes. So Emily, our guide, has uh, has fixed them up. Hi, you guys working? Uh, you're the lead. Are you the lead? Hi, hi. That's Dottie. Hi, Dottie. You Dottie? Hi. 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 Hello, puppy girls. Hello, puppy girls. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. piece of wood here is the emergency brake and they also tie it off with a rope to the tree in case the in case the dogs decide to start running without anyone in it now 
it's time of the tour where we can pet the puppies. Hugs and kisses. Hello. You guys taking a nap? <gasps> Look at your blue eyes. Look at your blue eyes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Well done. Well done. Good job. Good job, everyone. Hello. Good job. Hi. Hi. Good job. Hey, you. Are you washing your feet? Everybody's taking a nap from work. Look at this guy. He's like, I'm done. I need a break. Over here is using his bowl of water as a pillow. Nap time. And that was our dog mushing tour. Awesome. We are back on the monster truck. We're gonna head back down. <laughs> Look at this guy. This guy's playing with his bowl. Back down to the musher's camp. Now it's time for a photo stop to see the inlet in the mountains. Time for a little bit of a lecture. Oh, this to me is a, this is a perfect day. A couple days ago, it got a lot hotter than this and I, uh, I was studying. <laughs> Especially in our dog yard. It's a thousands of a thousands of year old sport that was started by the indigenous groups of the Arctic region. So, Sami people in Scandinavia, First Nations of Canada, Native Alaskans, pretty much every group native to the Arctic region figured out independently that sled dogs are the easiest, most efficient way to get around. And they were using it for practical purposes, for things like following migrating herds of game, to hunt, for travel, pretty much, or for trade, sorry, for, uh, pretty much any long distance travel. Togo over here, the dog on the far left in this photo, was kind of the champion of the story. He did the longest, most treacherous stretch of the journey, about 270 miles. Time to pet some puppies. Welcome to dog warts. Feels like a boulder at this point, I'm getting sick of picking him up. Uh, hence why I grabbed Slate. <laughs> Hello there. Are those your puppies? <laughs> You're doing so good, Scarlett. These ones are a month as of today. You can't go on any uh, antibiotics or anything for it until the puppies. So Thank y'all for coming out. Good. Good. Time for another adventure. Welcome to Bonfire Bay. So today's adventure is Bonfire Bay and it is uh, an oyster farm. So I'm not sure if we're actually going out on the boat to get our own oysters or not, but let's find out on this tour. These are purple stars. Dirty than you think. But they let you pick them off the wall? Yeah, I mean, they don't want me to. This is purple, that's the... So we get ours from Hilo, Hawaii. So that will get, we get about three million shipped here a year. So we'll get three million oyster seeds and we'll put it in something we call a flupsy. And that's a floating upwell system. So the whole, it not being able to reproduce actually plays in our favor because if they could reproduce and we were bringing them here, uh, it would be an invasive species. But basically, we throw them in that flubsy, and like I said, it's a floating upwell system, so everything you guys are going to see today is all suspended farming. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. So these are kind of those baby oysters, the really small. Mm. And you guys can grab them if you want, hold them, touch them, they're a little bit fragile. They don't bite. They don't bite, <laughs> yeah. Like... Each one's got a name, three million of them. <laughs> You can kind of see what that change is in that about that year. 
So those are sea urchins, and we call these our little Roombas or our free labor. Captain? <laughs> Anywhere around here. We'll have Olivia upstairs. She's going to be your bartender and likely your favorite person today. She'll be giving you the booze and the oysters. So, first things first, yes, we are in fact floating right now. We do got our pilings for the big pool that are drilled right into the ground. Uh, a lot of times we got a lot of oysters out here. We find ourselves to be one of the biggest bars. Yeah, so we do the suspended method. These guys are also raised up to the top level of the surface. That is feeding position, so that's where all the phytoplankton lives. It needs the sunlight to live, and that's what our oysters eat. So um, you can see a lot of dead ones in here. I'm sure you guys heard about our starfish issue, correct? Yeah. We hate those guys. They suck, literally. And But this guy right here is alive. The oysters come up here. This guy will be spinning, pressure washing at the same time. The smaller oysters will fall through these holes, so like this guy fell through, that's why I didn't make it. And then even the dead ones, the shells, will come down through the bottom as well. We'll pressure wash those guys again, take them off to the dock you were just at to process and ship off where the, wherever they need to go. We'll put them in here, stack them in, and then these guys will float on top of the water. As you can see, we have quite a few out there, so all those black things out there are these. The really cool thing about them is that when the waves come in, it bounces them around and it tumbles the oysters against each other, breaking down that shell from a really young age. Awesome, so those are our two methods we got for oyster farming out here. We do have some perch in here too, those smaller guys that are swimming around. Different than this guy, this is our leather star who feels like wet leather to the touch. You guys are more than welcome to get your hands dirty, get in there. I mean, you can hold him, like he doesn't feel that spiky, but if you went in hard, yeah, if you stepped on it, it would hurt. People eat these things, they're a delicacy overseas, about five strips of meat inside that people fry like calamari. Excellent. Um, but I'm just going to go over what we have in front of you and then as I'm passing things out you might notice I'm passing them in different areas around the table. That's just because we do everything here family style so once you try something just pass it down the line so everybody can get a taste. Uh, lighter beer but it has a hop at the end of it. Well, I'm not going to lie, I've had uh, oysters in the past and I did not like them. They're rubbery, chewy, and blah, but these ones were pretty tasty. They were smoked, uh, different toppings, not too bad. So if you like nature and you like beautiful scenery and you like oysters, then definitely this is the tour to come on. This is the place to come. Uh, Bonfire Bay Tour Company, awesome, uh, friendly people, great oysters. I'm not a big oyster fan, but I must say they were pretty tasty. So come check this out.